was that the big reason you were able to, to, to get your game together the way you did? Well, it definitely helped. When he hit shots, it, like I said, opened up the floor for everyone that um, handled the ball, me, Christian, Jamon. So when he hit shots like that, it just it's, it helps our team. It seems like you're really getting, in, you're finding your rhythm, you're finding your groove the last few games, Tyler. Can you talk about that? Not only today, but it seems like the last, as we get into the second half of the max season, can you talk about that? Well, it's it just um, coaching and my teammates, they give me confidence to go out there and play. Um, had a talk with Jamon, Dan, just us three, and they told me they need me to be aggressive. So that's what I've been doing, been aggressive, trying to help the team. Was it a little different than, other than the score? Was it, how different was this one than the first time you met up? You, you met up with Miami down there in Oxford? Um, I'll tell you, we, we didn't defend the second half up there. We did here, and that's why we won the game. How did you get to Akron? I mean, uh, everybody has a story. From Georgia, how did you, well, can you say how you got you got here to Coach Gross? Here? Coach by, by Coach Gross. Yeah. Okay, we'll leave it at we'll leave it at that. Yeah. Coach, you want to open the statement? Yeah. Um, well, Tyler just did it for me. Really, the the second half defense was something we talked about coming out of the game uh, the other night. Uh, that we, we, we were 120 on our defensive efficiency. BG shot 56% from the field the other night in the second half. And certainly give them credit. I know Turner made some plays, but I thought we made way too many mistakes and just really tried to remind them over the last two to three days, I, we're going to play better offensively as we get in sync here. You know, Jackie and I were talking coming in. I heard, I heard her say she probably didn't think I remember, but you took good shots. So our shot selection was pretty good today, and we stepped up and made a few of them. But make no mistake about it, who we are <laughs> is, you know, going into today, the number one defense in the league and 21st in the country. And we have to play that way, game in, game out. It has to be both halves for us to be as good as we can be. Uh, we take a lot of pride in that. We didn't do that the other night very well. And uh, today, I thought the difference was we defended in both halves. John, you always talked about it, and it was always about the rebounds. It had to you know, eat at you a little bit. 15 offensive rebounds, that had to. For sure it even, does. Even you, you have a victory, but to give up 15 offensive rebounds. Yeah. It's, it's an area we've got to improve on. We've got other areas we're working to improve on. We address those things. Our guys know that. I've talked to them about where we're at defensively. It is an area that has to improve for us. And it's the one area that you look at our statistics, we've got to be better. The guys know that. We've addressed it. We haven't dodged it. We'll continue to talk about blocking out and getting it done, and we'll work it in practice in creative ways this time of year. But it's got to be it's got to be better. Now, having said that, I'm going to give the guy. Let me get his number correct here. Number 21 is one of the best wedgers. That guy had six offensive rebounds, and four or five of them were wedging us under the rim le legally. I mean, it was unbelievable. I got to give that kid credit. He's a big body, and he really put us under the rim a couple times and dug out extra possessions for them. He had 40% of an of their 15 offensive rebounds, with one player, six in a game. I mean, that's a great effort by that kid, and uh, we've got to do a better job blocking out. At one point, Daniel hit three or four threes in a row. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, is it just a matter of? Hitting? Is he doing something different? Is the work staying off or what? Um, obviously, it, it I heard Tyler say it right when I walked in. You know, when he does that, it opens up the floor a little bit more for us. But we know he's capable of doing that. You're talking about a guy who's a 40% lifer coming into the year. I mean, this isn't like that's who he is. He's not shot at as great um, here lately. But you know what? I think his teammates still believe in him when he when he shoots a ball out there. I know I certainly do. Um, you know, I've used the phrase with him, as long as they're good ones, hang in there till you get hot, man. You know, you, you just keep rolling. You know, as long as they're good ones. I thought today, I'll have to take a look at it, but I thought Tyler, Jamon, Christian's playmaking and our transition offense pushing the ball created a few easier ones for him early, George. And then once he got some really clean looks, he buried two or three of them and it got him in a little bit of a groove. Assists on field goals. Ratio yeah, it's huge. Today. Yeah, we two thirds of them were assisted today. You know, Jamon, I told him in the locker room in front of the team, he said seven of our 16 were from him and he made us better. He didn't shoot it great today. And I told him we'd talk about the six turnovers in our private 
individual film session between now and the next game and let him enjoy this one. But obviously seven assists and then Tyler and Christian, all three of those guys that make a lot of plays for us, Jamal and Tyler and Christian, have the ability to not only score, obviously, uh, but they also have the ability to make guys better at the same time. And they've done it like the other night. Christian was 7-0 to zero in the Bowling Green game. You know, today, what was he? He was, because uh, of course he got in foul trouble, 4-2. to two. Tyler was 2-2. Two to two. Jamon had seven assists. So 13 of our 16 assists were from the three guys. And I thought they made pretty good decisions, certainly the majority of the game. But you're right, Jackie, the assist ratio was uh, in a good place. John, can you talk about the you talk about defense? Did you do anything special on Sabandi, or was it just that he was just not making shots at the start? No, nah, those guys got it done. I mean, we you try to give them the best scheme going into every game, but that's our players. You know, if the, the, those guys play hard. You know, Tyler can certainly echo, but I think our guys in that locker room, I think every every guy in there really believes in our defense. They know that we that we can get it done on that end of the floor, and it takes everybody. You know, we play certain things a diff certain ways. I'm not going to get into all that because obviously we play these guys again potentially in other teams and all that. But you know, everybody in our program has to be able to defend. And as we're now in our second year, you know, I've tried to get the message across to our guys that everyone, regardless of what position they play or what you know, how many we expect everybody to contribute defending in some way and contribute rebounding in some way. I don't care who you are, what year you are in school, how tall, what position you play, it doesn't matter. And I think the guys have really bought into that. Now what I will tell you is, I just said this on the radio, you know, I hope people really appreciate, and E-Man's kind of joined the party, which has been a big lift for our team. Um, but Reac and E-Man, when they're playing that position, they cover up a lot of stuff. And they, are, they allow you to do a lot of different things defensively. Um, uh, which, which, you know, obviously is a real strength of our team.